Welcome, I'm Brian Cardell. I'm a developer advocate at Egalia, and this is part four of this particularly recurring series that we're doing uh, at BlinkOns recently, in which we're sort of telling the story of the web from the people who helped build it, shape it, promote it, uh, people who are involved with the web really early. And today I'm really happy to be here with uh, Stephanie Bruis, uh, who was really publicly active in a bunch of ways especially in the sort of HTML5 era where I came to learn about her as Stephanie Sullivan. Uh, she ran uh, her own business and uh, was very public. Uh, for a while now, she's been at Salesforce and we're actually really super lucky to have her because she's retiring like soon. Do you want to maybe introduce yourself? Certainly. Yeah, just imagine trying to be someone who speaks at a lot of conferences, get married, change your name, and then really confuse everybody <laughs> but yeah like brian said i've i've been in this business since 1999 and um for the first 12 years had my own um company and then went to work at a startup for three years that didn't start up as as happens many times and now i've been at salesforce for over seven years and i'll be retiring this summer to this lovely place you see behind me. This is a picture of my yard in Costa Rica. <laughs> yes, Beautiful. it is. It is lush and tropical, and I cannot wait. But yeah, like how did how did you get involved? It's very different than how people would maybe. You don't have to imagine it. It exists. It's out there. It's the thing that your like your parents could talk to you about today. Yeah, maybe you want to get involved in the web. That seems like a good idea. Yeah, I, I came at it in a very roundabout way, as, as probably many people do. Um, this is my third career. I had uh, been a nurse early on and a travel agent. Then I had kids. I stayed home for 10 years. So I am old enough to retire. <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, I started this, this last career um, when I was 38. So that's kind of, you know, I see people now going, am I too old to get into this? No, you are not. Um, you can change your life at any point. And the reason I changed so completely is when I was looking at probably getting divorced and getting back into the workforce um, after being home, I was like, wow, I do not want to go back to the medical field. I do not. Travel agents had been taken over by the web. There was really not much left there. Everybody's booking online now. But when I had been a travel agent, I had taken one course. Um, and I wish I knew what I learned to write probably was basic or something. It was either and or if logic. And I wrote these kind of macro programs on top of our travel agency program. And it walked the um people making the reservations through saying do you need a car with that do you need a hotel you know that kind of thing real simple stuff but it was the only exposure i had had to like code and so when i was looking at going back in i my my uh college was all biology psychology kind of stuff not computer science in any way mm -hmm. and i started looking at it but i've always loved the brain and so i'm like what does my brain like to do i like detective work, puzzles, research, you know, just like digging in and figuring things out. And I was like, maybe code would be that, that one little piece of code I did. And so I decided I would possibly learn to write C plus because that's the only thing I'd ever heard of. <laughs> and I was talking to a friend that was in a RPG game with, with me. And he was like, oh, God, no, don't do that. <laughs> he was like, you should learn HTML. And I'm like, what is that? And he said, it's what the web is built out of. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And so I signed up for a course, a two-day HTML course at Micro Center. And uh, I took that course. And I thought it was super interesting. However, I didn't like the classroom environment because Either they were going too slow and I'm like, yes, I've got this, I've got this, or they rush right through something and I'm like, whoa, I, I don't know what you just did. 
And in my mind, the way my brain works is I want all the little building blocks at the bottom to be very solid. And then I want to build on top of them, right? Mm -hmm. I'm very uncomfortable with throwing all the blocks in the air and just watching them fall. So, um, And so I decided, hey, this is a really cool thing. And I think I'd like to know more, but I think I can learn it on my own. And I started doing tutorials and I joined mailing lists, which were the big thing back then in, in 99. And I did that for 15 hours a day. I drove people crazy with questions. I mean, I was so obnoxious. <laughs> and But I stayed on those mailing lists. And as I learned, I would answer the other newbie people's questions. Mm -hmm. And then I would ask the harder questions, right? And over a course of years, I ended up being the list mom of that <laughs> main list I was on. But I wanted, I always, you know, that's free work you do, but it's also how we all help each other. And I feel like people in the web are so giving. They write blog posts, they write tutorials, they give them away for free. At least we did back then. Now we have the lynda.coms and things like that, right? But back then, everything was pretty much free on the web and or in books bookstores were big used to go sit in the bookstore and read and read bought all the beginner's guides to various programs you know um but anyway i did that for 15 hours a day for the first year and was an amazing journey of like hi friend do you need a website <laughs> Can I build it for you for two hundred dollars? <laughs> it's it's interesting because um, it's a thing that I hadn't really thought of, but the mailing list and the like, just the community around the web actually was uh, it's like very open and uh, to an extent, yeah. kind of uh, you you could get involved in, in a in, in lots of things like help, like you say, like getting questions answered and then helping other people and i think a lot of people um well not a lot of people perhaps but a lot of people that we would be interviewing in these uh they did do that and, yeah. um, that was an important thing to have at that critical stage of the web especially i think and brian there weren't a lot of conferences back then in mm -hmm. the year 2000 you know mm -hmm. there it was but yeah it was the way we learned was a lot more, you know, IRC and mailing lists and books and, you know, people's blogs. Oh my gosh. I remember Eric Meyer was just, you know, when the first time I met him, I was just like, I am not worthy. <laughs> it was so amazing <laughs> because he shared so much great knowledge. Yes. He wrote, you know, he wrote books, of course, but he also shared a lot of knowledge free with the community. And Definitely. to this day, I, I still, Love that guy. He's great. Yeah, I I still am very happy that he came to work with us at Agalia and I get to yes. work with him every day. It's the greatest. You are thing. lucky. <laughs> um, so another thing that you said is like you then this like led to this sort of journey of like, you know, I, I'll build you a website more because I want to learn how to do it, but also you could compensate me to some very small extent that is not actually reflective of my labors <laughs> just to keep me going kind of. Uh, I, I also did that. Uh, my first websites were, you know, for a friend or um, something that I built just to show somebody because I, re I wanted them on the web, you know? Right, um, right. An artist friend of mine that, in fact, that I worked for, I, I got him on the web with his art very, very early. Uh, because he sort of couldn't imagine it and was like, I, right. why would well, somebody do that? Well, a lot of people couldn't imagine it back then. Mm -hmm. You know, the first one that I built was for a friend. She was a naturopath. And, you know, here she has this med natural medical practice. She had never thought of being on the web, you know. Right. It just wasn't a thing then. And it was a really interesting learning experience because, you know, I'd been focusing on the HTML and whatever, markup and such. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you need images when you build a website. Where do you get those? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I found some beautiful pictures of like photography of fruits and vegetables and such. And <laughs> did it that way. And I did, oh gosh, what was it called when we did those weird frames where the navigation never changed? Oh, what was that called, Brian? It was it was frames. It was frames. Oh, the frame like, sets. 
Yeah, frame yeah, set. frame set. Yes. So the first website I built was in a frame set. It was the only one I ever did that way. Mine too. I didn't, Mine too. I didn't really know you could do it another way. It was like, oh, I want this navigation to always be here. I should put it in a frame set. It's funny because frame sets are kind of the answer. Like a, a lot of single page apps that are single page apps are that way because like we don't use frame sets, but frame sets, we were trying to solve many of the same problems. We were like, well, I don't, I don't want the whole page to go away. I want the the header and the navigation right. to stay there <laughs> and just this middle part changes. But. but but meanwhile, while you and I were building these little inexpensive things learning, there were people getting a million dollars for a website. It was like pretty crazy. It, I would hear like, was. oh, such and such company paid 1 million point three for this website. And you would go there and you'd be like, for what? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? So, so it yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> you did actually manage to get past the, I, I'm going to build you a website uh, like on the super cheap. Um, and uh, like, can you talk about, because like you you started a, what became a successful like small business yourself. Um, like how, how did that, how did that happen initially? It, it was kind of an accident in a way. Um, to be honest, I, as a woman and, and starting a brand new career in a thing where I knew no one, um, I set three rules for myself and they were very important rules and I never broke them. And those rules were, I would never say I can't because my personality is such that even if I believe I can, if I haven't, I wouldn't tell you I can. I would say, oh, Brian is really good at that database stuff you should go ask Brian, right? <laughs> So-and-so is a great graphic designer. You should ask them. And so I made the rule, can't say I can't. Um, I never once didn't deliver, which was crazy. I would then go home and go crazy doing tutorials, figuring out how to do the thing. I told him, yes, I will do that for you. Um, and the other thing was, is also kind of uncomfortable to like, I'm not comfortable at a party where I don't know anybody, you know, kind of person. I can talk to you once I get to know you, but um, but I made the rule for myself that I would do just like guys in any business. I'll go have a beer with the group of people because you hire people you know. And even if you're uncomfortable in that situation, you get you make connections. And when somebody goes, oh, I need something that's like very CSS heavy and Stephanie does that. You know, they're not going to go out and just say to the general universe, does anybody do CSS? No, they're going to go to the people they know first. And then the third thing that the third rule that I had for myself was no pictures anywhere of me. And I did that for three years. Um, there was not a single picture, no, nothing on my website, nothing in mailing lists. And that was just a personal thing of I wanted to make sure that everything I did was because of my brain and my abilities. Mm -hmm. I did not want somebody to go, oh, she's kind of cute. I'll hire her. No way. No way. It was very, very important to me to build this business that way. So those are my three rules. And in the, somehow, and I was thinking about this last night, trying to think how I met Scott Hendricks, but I lived in Wilmington, North Carolina, a small little beach town. And somehow I connected with another person that did the web there. And because I was focusing more on the graphics side then, because I was helping my friend and thinking about graphics, he did more database and that side of things. And so he said, hey, do you want to come uh, work on this project with me? No pay. <laughs> it's called Easy Shopping Town. It was this concept of like, we were going to set up these little storefronts for all the actual brick and mortar businesses in town, but people could shop virtually. And um, there were 10 people involved. It was a startup um, back in you know 2000, probably. And uh, so we would meet weekly, the 10 of us, and they would say, well, we want this now. And I would say, yes, I can do that. And maybe it's animated GIFs, you know? I didn't know how to do those. I'm like, ah, I need fireworks. Okay, <laughs> how does this work, you know? And so I did more of the, the, the design piece and the front end building and Scott did, you know, the back end. And then right as we got everything ready, we we're ready to launch, we had gotten our first two customers, we had built the first two storefronts. 
the dot com bust game. And boom, everything dropped like a rock. Everybody freaked out. And the other eight people who hadn't really done work, they had been like, they were going to sell it and they were imagining these things. Scott and I did all this free work, right? Mm-hmm. They just said, never mind, this isn't going to work and dropped it. <laughs> So what's really interesting to me is like everybody uh, that we've talked to at these blink on so far, like they they weren't all involved in browsers then, uh, but they got involved in actual browsers really early. Um, you and I didn't. Um, and we both kind of came into it at a time when uh, at first, you know, like nobody could imagine why would you want to be on the web? Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with Netscape's IPO. Uh, Tim Berners-Lee credits that with like making people realize, oh, this is going to be big, uh, right. because Netscape IPO was like ginormous. Uh, suddenly there was this rush. It was the gold rush, right? Uh, every like you mentioned startups, like uh, there were startups everywhere. Like any any half thought idea you could come up with somebody was yeah. going to fund it and develop yeah. it and there were so many opportunities um and like you you know like that's also like when i really thrust into the web and it looked very positive and i got like my first job i bought uh, like my first car i bought like my first house you know uh and within a very short window of time um suddenly the dot com bust happen and i guess the closest thing that we have really is like maybe the housing crisis or something but for like for our industry it was scary like that right it was like oh my is this even going to come back (laughs) right i have suddenly uh chosen at some point in my life to try to build a career on this and like uh uh-oh yeah it's just a mom with two kids on my own, right? Thinking, yeah. oh boy, did I just make a really bad decision <laughs> on yeah. direction? But I kept, I kept going, and I kept building. Every every time I would get a new business site to build, I would add one more thing I'd never done before. We didn't have good web standards support, uh, right? And things were very, very uneven across the web. We were still there were no, there were no web state. platform tests. That, that's yeah. astounding to me that it took halfway more, I guess, than halfway to where we are today in the web's lifetime before the like the actual web platform test project became a thing. Yeah, um, it's pretty amazing. That's amazing. But you know, you were asking, how did I turn it into a business? To be honest, it was kind of the give to get model. Um, mm-hmm. I stayed on those mailing lists. And as I started answering more and more questions, people that had come there to learn because let's say they have a small business and they thought they could just build their own website. And so they're on the list and then they go, oh, this is a lot harder than I realized. And then they would write me privately and say, hey, you seem like you know what you're doing. What would you charge me to build my site for me? I literally built my business by never advertising never Mm. had a single ad, never just helped people. And then work came to me. Um, And the writing and speaking kind of was the same way. I finally, after three years, felt like I had kind of learned what I could learn on my own, you know, doing just tons of stuff. And I wanted to go to a conference and hear people. And there was a a conference that was brand new called the Other Dreamweaver Conference. (laughs) Oddcon. And um, I think it was in Chicago that year. And I went there and it was the first time I'd met anybody in, in real life. And um, it was it was like a really exciting time. And there was a guy that worked for, I guess, Macromedia at the time, um, Matt, who was in charge of the community. And we got to talking about CSS and stuff. And he was like, would you write an article for us? And I was like, oh, God, I hate writing. You know, No, no, I don't want to write. And then my friend that went with me, Ginger, we were getting ready to go back to the airport. And she goes, you know, we really could do it together. I like to write. And I was like, you think? And so we got to the airport. And there was Matt waiting for his plane, too. 
And so what, what are the chances in the Chicago airport, right? Yeah. But anyway, and so, and, and I was flying back to the East Coast and he was flying West. So I don't even know how that happened, but ran into him at a restaurant. And I said, you know, I think if Ginger and I can do it together, we'll do it. And he was like, all right. So that was the first, it was a, a, a simple styling. I think it was called simple styling with CSS. How did I remember that? Anyway, um, and we wrote that and I found that I sort of took over. <laughs> like, I hate writing, but I had a lot of opinions about what should be said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I did that and that went well. And then they asked me to do some other stuff. And then the people at the conference said, hey, why don't you, uh, oh no, we, we uh, started doing Oh gosh, Community MX. Do you remember that at all? Mm, it was no. it, it predated Linda, started almost at the same time. And the theory was all these writers would come together kind of in a very, um, none of us got paid. It was like the site makes money. It was a subscription site, one of the first ones. Mm. And when the site makes money, we all get money kind of deal and very communal. And it was a great theory, didn't work very well in practice from a standpoint of in behind the scenes where we're like, get your article in, but you're not, we're not paying you. I started writing the newsletter for that. That was a lot of fun because I could go out and find articles and, and put them together and make them funny. So that got the writing going. And then out of that, they said, well, would you speak at this conference? Because it was the same guy. And I said, oh, Lord, I, I'm scared to death of speaking, but OK, I'll try. And there was probably a hundred and some people in the room. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. I, I bet that the like the way you performed under pressure there like made a lot of people think, wow, she is pro, right? <laughs> Even though to you it probably felt the opposite of that. I, I bet oh, that a lot of people were just as you say, very impressed. Yeah, it was mortifying. It was mortifying. But yeah. in the end, you know, I went on to, you know, write a chapter in a book about CSS with with Dreamweaver. And I I used Go Live the first year that I was learning. Then I switched to Dreamweaver because I heard it had better database support. And I was working with a woman that was going to do the database side of things. So we switched to Dreamweaver. I really liked the split view and I actually learned a lot of things from it, like what is this weird table markup and why are there TVs when they're cells and things like that, you know? So I, I learned a lot by watching it. Um, and then in, when I started writing the chapter in the book, they put me on the beta for Dreamweavers so you can get this stuff early and write your chapter. And I really loved beta testing. Um, I, I did what they tell you not to do. I used it for my work because how else, I'm not gonna sit and just play with it, you know? So I used it for my work it would blow things up and I would write up bugs. I learned to write really good bugs. Um, I feel like that's something that people nowadays really don't know how to do. Like when they run into a browser bug, they don't file it because I think a lot of people are intimidated and they don't know how to write a good bug, how to make a little case and you know make it reproducible and say what you expect to see and what you're seeing instead and you know that kind of thing. Right. So I got into that. And I had gotten into the standards thing at that at this point via um, just, well, via learning. But I'll tell you the biggest Im impression on me at that time was Molly Holtschlag. Um, Molly and Eric both went to Vegas and spoke at ToddCon. And I want to say this was probably 2003 to four ToddCon because they did it yearly. And that was the first time I'd met Eric in person and it, his wife Kat was there and we had a blast and I met Molly in person and she did a talk called the history of the web. I didn't know anything about the history of the web. I was just learning to build on the web. That was the most, I mean, I got goosebumps. That was the most interesting thing and it was so exciting to me and it made everything clear. Like this was a journey for people. This is, is a journey for the platform. And that's when I got really into standards. And so when I got on the Dreamweaver beta, I was then the person bugging them, like make, make it do this properly, make it know it should be putting outputting standards. And um, Drew McClellan and uh, Rachel were in that same beta. And somewhere near the end, they said, you know, you're doing the same thing we are, pushing them for standards. We're involved in the web standards project. Do you want to, you're already doing the work. Would you like to join the web standards project? And I was like, sure, let me do more free work. 
<laughs> right. right. But right. Um, so I worked with the web uh, wasp until um, until we turned it off. And I'm really sad we turned it off. I think it was premature in hindsight. And you mentioned Molly's history of the web talk. And now here you yeah. are uh, on a history of the web thing know, yourself. You're part of the history of the web. <laughs> Um, it's kind of funny. Just speed so, us up. So I, I like to ask this of like kind of a lot of people is like, how good was your prognostication record? Like <clears throat> for me, uh, when I saw Amazon, I was like, cute. <laughs> but how could they money? compete with <laughs> Barnes and Noble and Borders? Exactly. Like, I mean, just it seems impossible. Uh, uh, when I it, learned my prognostication that, was terrible. <laughs> oh, good, good. When I learned that Google was going to like sell these tiny little ads in your search, How I silly. thought like, I mean, what are they thinking? That's not going to make anything. <laughs> um, but no, I was. Here with we you. are here. We are. I was with you. I was totally with you. And well, even Lynda.com, when when we were doing Community MX, CMX. Linda was getting started and, and, you know, we couldn't make it work after a, gosh, a year and a half of it, I think. And we're like, what is she doing? Like, th this is ridiculous. Nobody wants to pay for content. Mm. Now she retired very wealthy. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I, I think uh, great I, uh, I wish you luck taking Thanks. your good things to this beautiful place in Costa Rica. Yeah. And um, thank you so much for joining us for this. Uh, it was really great. Absolutely. Lots of fun and come visit us.